Hello and welcome back. I had a few requests for a video on how to take better pictures. Now, while I'm not the perfect photographer, always learning, I won't pretend to be the best photographer either. Um, I am a professional triathlon photographer. It is how I earn a living. And I do spend my time running teams of other photographers, helping them to deliver high level shots to more people for race organizers. So here's a few tips on how to take better running photos in the hope that it helps you improve and you learn something. Tip number one would be consider the image subject. A lot of times you hear people like spray and pray, point and shoot, whatever the, whatever the thing is. If you consider what you're taking the picture of and what, you, what the purpose of the image is, then you'll find it a lot easier from the beginning to take a nice picture. For example, I'll overlay some here. Some might be of just a landscape with a runner quite small. Some might be a silhouette of a runner. Some might be a runner's head and shoulders. Some might be, you know, the runner moving into the frame, right to left, left to right, doesn't really matter. So you're kind of picking the sort of shot you want first and then trying to execute it second so yeah taking a bit of time just to work out what you're seeing in front of you uh, what kind of shot you want what might work well will make a big difference tip number two background is everything I see a lot of people take some really nice shots that have you know, fences, signs, port loos all kinds in the background. I always sometimes wonder if you'd point it, if you'd taken a step to the left or right and used a different background, how much nicer would the shot be? You know, if you shoot low, if you get down on the floor, shoot low to high, can you frame it against the sky instead of a busy fence? Can you go the other way around? Um, so the background is the floor, so it's a bit less harsh. Is the background the image? So yeah, Considering the background is super important, I see a lot of people not really caring about what's in the background of their photos and it can really ruin your shot. So unless you're prepared to spend a lot of time on Photoshop getting rid of it, it's much easier to just move location and consider what is in the background of your image. Tip number three, I would go no down steps. It's not a necessity there. You see plenty of nice shots where the runner is on a down step, but when the runner is making upward motion, everything looks better. They look a lot less like a melted candle. This is the best part of the running phase. It just looks really nice, really crisp. The kit looks good. The runner will think they look good. Ideally both feet off the ground or one on the ground and just a really nice clean, upward motion. The best way to achieve this is stick the camera on burst mode, focus on the runner and once you've picked your shot, you know, let it rip five, six frames, maybe even more sometimes. That will mean you get the full set as the runner goes sort of down step back into the upward motion off the ground and then back onto the ground. So if you've picked a nice shot and you've got a nice focus, there's probably nothing wrong with spraying a few frames at that to make sure you get the perfect one. It just makes such a massive difference when the runner is doing that, you know, and especially if you're doing like a silhouette or something, you're probably gonna want a nice clean upward motion, both feet off the ground with separation. It's gonna look really cool. Uh, it obviously, if it's a big group of runners, getting everyone not on a down step is really, really difficult. So maybe pick your lead runner or your lead few and get them on upward motion and just kind of do your best. Like I say, it's not a necessity. You do see nice shots where the runners are on down steps, but generally people prefer images of themselves when they're having upward motion. 
which is one of the reasons why a lot of race photography, the shots are much less desirable because the photographers don't really have time to sift through the images to get rid of down steps or even have time to shoot everyone in upward motion. And a lot of them are not shooting bursts really, they're just picking a good frame, making sure it's in focus um, and uploading it straight to a cloud before it's even been edited. Number four, composure. This is of the image, not of you taking it, although both is probably quite relevant. Yeah, composure of the image, something like the rule of thirds is a great place to start. If you split the image into thirds, does everything happen on the two lines? So yeah, if you Google the rule of thirds, it will become very clear. So splitting your image into thirds makes it very aesthetically pleasing to people looking at it. So that's something to consider. The other things are like, you know, you could have a runner centrally, you could split the landscape into thirds and have the runner as part of it. You can, you know, you can do a lot of different things with your composure. Are your lines horizontal if you've got uh, backgrounds, landscapes, you know, are, are vertical, are they straight, are they wonky, you know, if you're if that's a conscious decision. So yeah, consider the composure of the image, make sure it's well structured, and that will take your shot a long, long way. Finally, edit the image. This for me just sets it apart from your classic iPhone photo. iPhones are getting really good now, the new 15, the camera is sensational. Other phones are available, smartphone versus full frame camera or whatever camera you've got. Uh, shooting in RAW and editing your images, even if you just straighten it up, change a few of the colors or bright, brighten it, darken it, whatever you need to do, um, increase the sharpness. I think editing an image can really take it from an average image to a really nice image. I've shot myself some actually quite bad images in the can and then you stick them in Lightroom or Photoshop and make them into real rippers. If it's blurry, you could silhouette it. If it's colors are wayward or the white balances off, you can mash it into black and white like there are ways to take an average image and edit it into a beautiful image obviously as you go through time it is easier to shoot nice images and they need less editing uh, that being said i think i still edit all my images from raw uh, it just makes yeah it it makes a massive difference to the output i know some photographers that do shoot bits in jpeg but the the colors are just never quite as nice yeah and it just never seems to have quite the same effect so editing images goes a long way just spending a little bit of time in lightroom you can get lightroom for like nine pounds a month it's not a huge outlay it's well worth it for your picture and shooting in RAW will make a big difference. So there's my five tips, take nicer running images, simple as that. If you have any questions, drop me a comment or get hold of me on one of the Instagrams, 226, Jackie Sco. More than happy to answer any questions and help you out. Like I say, I'm not the perfect photographer, always learning myself, but if more of us can learn to take nice images, then our sport and the athletes are the ones that benefit. So go out, grab a camera, get shooting, enjoy and send through what you create.